Well, hello and welcome to Faith, Philosophy and Life. Me, Mr. Shelton. It's great to be back and I do hope that you are doing well. Today we are continuing our series on Islam and we're thinking about uh, some of the five pillars. And we looked at an overview of the five pillars of Islam last time. Today we're going to be focusing on the pillar of Hajj. We're going to do that for a couple of lessons. Um, Hajj is the one that Muslims are... Uh, expected to do once in a lifetime if they are able to um, and so our title today is what is Hajj so I'd like you to grab a pen and a paper because here's our cheesy intro music Okay, fantastic. Welcome back. So uh, today our title, as I said, was what is Hajj? So please make sure you've got that written down. And we're going to explore what Hajj is and what ha happens during it. Uh, so our numeracy objectives today, rather than the literacy one, is we're going to create a graph, a bar chart, uh, show it using some Hajj data. It's going to be good if we can describe what Hajj is. It's going to be great if you can explain what happens during Hajj. And it's going to be even better if you can quote some data from your work as well. There's going to be four things that we're going to think about. We're going to look at a quiz time, a little bit of media, uh, data and investigation, and then we're going to start thinking about planning a project, which we're going to be spending the next few lessons doing. So my first question in pre-COVID days is, I wonder how far you've ever traveled to holiday? Okay, now some of us may have traveled for miles. I was very fortunate. I was able to go to Disney World last summer with my family. Um, I don't mean this summer, which was COVID related and I managed to go five miles down the road to the local beach. I mean, a decent last summer when we could get out places. I wonder the furthest place you've ever traveled is. I wonder where it was and what it was like. And I wonder what was the most exciting part of your travels? What was the bit that you enjoyed the most? So with that in mind, I'd like you just to think about that for a moment. Maybe jot a few notes in your book. Don't feel you have to. You may just want to have a, a quick Snapchat or text or TikTok or whatever you young people are doing these days uh, with one of your friends just to explain these thinking. Just say, I'm doing a lesson, Mr. Shelton, and uh, he's asked this question. Do you know, I, I went to holiday to, I don't know, Abidjan. Can't even pronounce that Africa or something. Uh, anyway, do that now and then come back to me. Pause me as you would normally do. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is uh, using the description below, I would like you to access uh, one of the worksheets for today's lesson. It looks like this behind me. Uh, there are a number of questions on it. Uh, now, what I also need to do is to access a separate tab in your browser um, because I'm unable to link this clip because it's a BBC clip. Uh, so you'll need to actually just uh, type in the code that I've got in red there in your browser. That will take you straight to the YouTube clip that you need to watch. So it's http colon slash slash tiny.cc slash fpl dash hajj bbc. If you type that in, that will take you straight to uh, the clip for you to watch. That will give you uh, all the information you need to answer the worksheet. Uh, so you're going to have to pause me. Please do it in a separate browser so you don't lose me. And then you're going to come back to me. Okay, so hopefully you were able to access that okay. Uh, this is our sort of next task. Um, well, these are some of the answers, should I say. So you've got the Iran, which is the clothing. Everyone wears it to show that they're, they're all equal. That's why it's all the same clothing they wear. Nice sign of equality there. They go around the Kaaba seven times. Uh, they sacrifice a goat um, to symbolize the lamb provided for by Allah to the, where the story of Abraham and Ishmael. And then uh, you've got the Hajj order behind me. So we start at one, then go to two, then three, then four. Then we go to five, six, seven. I think that was probably fairly obvious. Um, 
because I've just read it in numerical order. But anyway, there it is for you. So pause me, double check everything you've got and then come back to me. Okay, so uh, what we've done so far, hopefully we can describe what happens on Hajj and uh, maybe we can even start to explain what happens during it as well. Um, so this is what we're going to do now. Um, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to create a bar chart um, with regards to the number of people that went to Hajj in 2017. It was the most recent data I could get hold of. And you've got there from the different countries around the world. Now, obviously, there were lots of other countries that went, but these are numerical data. So 25,000 people from the UK went on Hajj in 2017. So um, again, what I'd like you to do is to construct a bar chart. So you have to draw it out. You need to work out uh, what's your maximum side on your left hand side, how many countries you've got going along the middle. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about and you don't know what a bar chart is, I suggest you Google it or you speak to your maths teacher because uh, bar charts are absolutely fundamental for your studies. Um, before you do that, however, I do have another clip to show you. So let's just watch this, then you come back to me. Every year, millions of Muslims from every corner of the globe gather in the Saudi Arabian city of Mecca. Nearly every one of them arrived as part of a mass pilgrimage to the holiest site in Islam, a journey known as the Hajj. This ritual is one of the largest temporary migrations in the world. So we wanted to know, what is the significance of the Hajj and why do Muslims travel to Mecca? Well, the Hajj is a deeply religious event which occurs every year from the 8th to the 12th or 13th day of the last month of the Islamic lunar calendar. This month is known as Dual Hijjah, and since the Western Gregorian calendar and the Islamic calendar do not follow the same timekeeping standard, the Gregorian is solar, this date is different for Western cultures every year. Although the Hajj is annual, Muslims are only obligated to make the journey once in their lives. In fact, one is only allowed to go if they're an adult, physically able, and can make sure their family is provided for in their absence. The location and journey itself hold deep religious significance. Mecca is considered the birthplace of Islam's prophet Muhammad and the area of his first revelation. However, it's believed that the Hajj has been practiced since the days of Ibrahim, some 2,000 years earlier. The journeys and rituals are based on a number of rituals performed by Ibrahim after being commanded by God to leave his wife and child. Eventually, Ibrahim built the Kaaba, a sacred black structure directing Muslims to travel to it, a journey first officially completed by the Prophet Muhammad around 628 AD. Pilgrims who arrive in Mecca must perform a number of rituals to complete the Hajj. They begin and end at the Kaaba, which today is an enormous black cube in the center of Mecca. Pilgrims must walk counterclockwise seven times around it, after which they go back and forth between two significant hills, then drink from a particular well, hold a vigil at Mount Arafat, sleep in the open air, and collect 49 stones to later throw at three pillars to symbolize stoning the devil. These regions are several miles away from each other, and pilgrims are expected to travel among them by foot, although in recent years, a monorail system has been put in place by the Saudi government. Near the end of the journey, male pilgrims shave their heads and perform an animal sacrifice, and the Hajj finally culminates in an enormous multi-day festival called the Festival of Sacrifice. Those who have completed the pilgrimage often add the title Haji to their names as a sort of social signifier. However, with literally millions of pilgrims topping out at more than 3 million in 2012, some of these rituals are approximated due to logistical issues. Pilgrims used to kiss the black stone of the Kaaba, now they must simply point at it if they can't reach it. Instead of pillars, visitors now throw stones at long walls. And the animal sacrifice is no longer performed by individuals. It's instead done by the Saudi government on behalf of all the pilgrims. The huge number of attendees is also somewhat dangerous. In 1990, a stampede in a tunnel killed more than 1,400 people. And a similar stampede in 2015 resulted in more than 2,000 deaths, according to the Associated Press. As of 2016, the Saudi government has even implemented GPS bracelets to keep track of pilgrims and to notify them of the appropriate times to perform the rituals. For many, the pilgrimage signifies a sort of rebirth of their faith. This yearly event holds deep and significant ties to Islamic history. And despite its slow evolution to accommodate the massive number of attendees, the Hajj effectively remains a requirement for all Muslims. Over the next few decades, the amount of people partaking in the Hajj will increase dramatically. Muslims are expected to double in population by 2035. To find out what Islam and other religions will look like in the future, watch our video here. 
But over the next 35 years, as the world population grows by another third, Muslims are expected to nearly double. At the same time, the rest of the world's religions, including the unaffiliated, are expected to stay relatively stable, and even drop slightly in proportion to the big two. Thanks for watching Seeker Daily. Don't forget to like and subscribe for new videos every day. Okay, brilliant. So now you've seen that, uh, now I'd like you to get on constructing your bar chart so that you can see uh, the effect of how many people around the world went on Hajj uh, from these specific countries. So pause me now and get onto that and come back to me when you're done. Okay, so that brings us to our uh, sort of almost final activity. So what we've done is we've described what Hajj is, we've explained what happens during it. We're now going to start um, putting some information together with some quotes. So this is planning of a project, okay? So we're not doing the project today. Uh, we've got another lesson or content next time, uh, which will also fit in around this. So just have a look at this, maybe make a few notes of some of these sentence starters. Um, you won't know all of it yet, and that's fine because we've been saying we've got another lesson to go yet. Uh, so have a look at that. We're going to leave it there. So you pause it, leave it in the background. Thanks very much for your time. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. Wash hands. God bless you. And use the rest of your lesson just to do a little bit of work on this. I'll see you soon.